when we try to describe the engine, the gold standard for me when I explain how much uh, faith I have in an engine, it's either against a Continental 65 or the O200. Let's face it, as far as engines go, this is a cornerstone engine. But it's a cornerstone engine that for, you know, just hasn't changed because it hasn't had to until now. LSA, the Cessna announcement, Continentals in a Cessna. What a concept. Let's talk about the O200D and why this ain't your father's O200. Oh, thanks, Jim. Um, this is actually a whole new, we've taken the, whole, the old O200A and actually with some incentives from Cessna and, and the desire to make a light sport aircraft that's going to have a nice uh, power to weight ratio. They've come to us and asked us to re-engineer the O200A to see if there's anything that we could do to make the uh, engine a lot lighter. We coordinated with our engineering team and uh, we started on the process of taking a look and analyzing what we could do to lighten up this engine. Uh, and then it ultimately uh, it worked out for Cessna. It was able to put our engine back onto the light sport and reintroduce our relationship with them. Um, so it's, it's been a very good experience for us. Well, let's face it, there are <clears throat> how, how many 150s out there with O200s in them? Oh, there's quite a few. I think we all learned how to fly in a Cessna 150 back when we were, our weight and balance was a little better, but um, it's, there's, there's several hundred, that's several thousands of them out there flying. And a whole new generation learning to come up the LSA ladder will do so through Skycatcher and the O200D. Absolutely. We're bringing back, everything is going retro. Everything comes around, uh, again, you know, what goes around comes back around. What was the old line, uh, what, what was old may be due again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Aero TV is brought to you by... Today, there is an affordable, high-performance, easy-to-own, and easy-to-operate, very light jet designed with you in mind. Far less expensive than any other twin-engine jet to buy, it is also the least expensive to own and operate. It is the Eclipse 500, the jet that's easy to buy, easy to fly, and fun to own. The jet for you. Now, back to Aero TV. So what did you do to this? Well, we'll start with the back of the engine. We've actually done a lot of things to lighten up the, uh, the engine. We've taken about 25 pounds out of it. And where we started out with a lot of it was, uh, we'll go back in the back of it. You can actually see, starting with, at the top of the accessory cases, we put a lightweight starter on there, and that gave us a little bit of a weight savings. Uh, we, we went down and started looking at the alternator. There's a lot, a lot of lightweight alternators out there, so we replaced that with a lightweight alternator, and we've replaced that, and uh, that gained us a little bit more weight savings. You can see the oil filter is going to be a little bit smaller, so we've uh, shaved a few, a few ounces off there. And when we really say shaving off ounces, we really are looking at every little ounce that we could get out of the engine. So this has been an ounce by ounce progression. Absolutely, absolutely. Looking at um, our design for our cylinders, that's another one of the noticeable things you can see out here is we've actually tapered the barrels of the cylinders. We've taken a, uh, a little bit more weight out of there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, it is in line with the uh, design of our big bore engine, so there's no cooling effect, and it's you know we have to shave a few more pounds off of there. So that was an actually a really easy trade-off for us. And then coming around, the things that you really can't see that we've done to this engine to, to really reduce the weight is actually inside. We were able to uh, uh, lighten up the crankshaft and the camshaft quite a bit just by removing uh, some weight in some non-stress, non-critical stress areas. We've uh, actually come to the 21st century and we're doing uh, finite element analysis been able to run uh, computer design CADs, uh, programs and scenarios, and, and able to take weight out of where it, was, um, uh, where it wasn't in a high stress area, and then rerun it to make sure that we haven't transferred any stress areas. So it's been a really interesting uh, um, uh, endeavor for us. And the total package, we're 25 pounds light. And yet, you're not done yet. Oh no, we're still working on it. Um, we're, we're working and refining it. Um, we're still working on designs with the oil tank, maybe take a couple more ounces out, and we're doing a few things with the propeller flange to see if we can take a little bit more weight out of there as well. So the O200D that's going into the Skycatcher, let's talk about its specs, performance, and what we can expect from a standpoint of operational parameters. Well, right now we're still we're still in the process of certification, and as we're making changes, we're going to ha we'll have a final weight, but we're looking somewhere around the 200-pound range okay. uh, installed in the aircraft is what our target is what we're looking for. Uh, we are looking at uh, a true 100 horsepower. Mm -hmm. It's not the 96 horsepower that we call 100. We're actually pushing out of 103, 104 uh, uh, horsepower. Um, so we're still continuing to refine that. And as we go through certification, we'll make a few more refinements, and that'll be finalized. Uh, will we see any changes to fuel specifics or any uh, any other operational parameters? 
Nothing with the fuel yet. Uh, we're still we're still getting with the 100 low lead at this point. There's not a lot of continuity with the unloaded fuels and mo gas, so we're we're waiting to see how that works out. It don't really work well on our engine uh, at this point, but we're we're still t we're experimenting and we're researching those and looking for ways. Uh, don't know when the technology is going to be available or how our answers are going to be, but we're researching it. Aero TV is brought to you by. Cirrus aircraft have always been easy to fly. Now they're easier than ever to buy. A complete line of ownership programs gives you everything you need to purchase, trade, finance, lease, insure, and warranty your Cirrus. There's even an ownership program for non-pilots. The Cirrus Access Pilot can teach you how to fly or fly the plane for you. Find out more at www.cirrusdesign.com. Cirrus, for the love of flying. Now, back to Aero TV. Well, bringing this engine back to a Cessna series was uh, kind of an interesting historical uh, issue and a perspective. Nice to see that uh, some things keep doing well no matter what. Where, well, where else might we be seeing O200s? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, right now, we don't have an answer for you. Uh, we were uh, taken aback about as much interest as we had in this particular engine from other OEMs, from uh, kit builders, just from the public at large wanting uh, another options for their airplane. And uh, we're in the process of, uh, of, of taking and gathering all of that and uh, putting together something. I think you'll see, if you keep watching our website and keep listening to our news announcements, you might hear something later in the year about exactly where we're going to go with this, uh, this new light sport uh, category. We're, we are actively and, and aggressively looking at this, at this market. Now, are you going to FAA certify the engine or are you going to go by the ASTM standard? We're going to do the FAA certification. And also, as I understand it, uh, according to our conversations with, uh, with Rhett Ross, this engine is going complete to China. You're assembling. Yes, we're assembling in the United States in Mobile, Alabama, and we'll be actually sending them to wherever the assembly points are going to be for oh, that okay. engine. Cessna has announced they have gotcha. three assembly okay. points, so they'll go right to the assembly points. So they're, they're staying in the U.S.? Absolutely. It's American-made, 100%. Outstanding. Where is the future of this engine, though? I mean, the, the, you've done so much with some alternate technologies. What do you see the O200 looking like a couple of years from now? Might we see any uh, interesting little surprises on the electronic front? There is, there are some uh, initiatives for us to kind of look at that in electronic ignition, fuel injection, um, uh, th those different particular, particular combinations, mm -hmm. and we're working on uh, on those. But right now, um, with just the Cessna, on, we're, on, we're on production schedule and on time for the Cessna, and then after we get the Cessna certification done, we'll start working with uh, different and additional models. But it has sparked a lot of conversation, and the creativity at Teledyne at this point is just phenomenal. So there you have it, an engine that taught tens of thousands of people to fly on the front of <laughs> more, more Cessna 150s than any of us want to count, and uh, burned an awful lot of uh, avgas over the years, is uh, poised to launch a new generation of flyers through LSA, the Cessna Skycatcher, and models to be named later. Mac, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Jim.